So, the big question is this. How are ambitious people like us, who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? Use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. If you like this video, do not forget to hit that like button now. Or if you want us to improve our content, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button and give us your feedback in the comment section below. Here at Tetra Noodle, we are passionate about entrepreneurship, technology, and innovation. Every week, we bring you insightful and engaging interviews, tips, tricks, and strategies to help you grow your business or rise in your corporate profession. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And do not forget to hit that bell icon so that you are notified when we publish new content. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dream Show. I'm your host, Manu Jagarwal, and today I will be talking with Nancy Guberti. Nancy is a holistic nutritionist, defeat autism now practitioner, a gluten-free and casein-free diet counselor, healthy lifestyle coach, and metabolic and functional medicine specialist. Wow. Nancy practices a biomedical and nutritional approach to healing, and she utilizes functional medicine uh, while testing extensive health intake consultancy, and she developed um, individualized treatment regimes customized to her clients' health issues. So welcome, Nancy. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, we're excited to learn about uh, our health problems and how we can heal them by uh, nutrition. Uh, so uh, that being said, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your background and how you came about into, uh, into this uh, field of uh, uh, healing and nutrition? Yes. So my first love was in corporate America. I worked for Goldman Sachs mm -hmm. and I was the vice president of fixed income e-commerce. So I would travel four days a week. It was so exciting. I got to really learn different brokerage firms and how they did their research and trades with Goldman Sachs. And then we would develop systems for them to make the processes and the research get to their fingertips faster. So they do trades with us. Mm -hmm. And it's very analytical. Um, but oh, I think all of life is analytical. And then I got into starting my own practice because my youngest son developed a liver disorder and conventional medicine offered no answers. And the doctors could not tell me how his future would be. Um, so that was alarming to me. And I never liked biology or medicine or anything, mm -hmm. but I went to school and I learned about uh, food chemistry and then further into functional medicine. Mm -hmm. And I applied that to really save him. Mm -hmm. um, but the experience changed all of us. So I started my own practice. Nice, nice. And uh, how long did it take for you to uh, learn uh, this uh, new uh, you know, get this knowledge? It took many years. So it's a journey, you know, so food chemistry. So I went for my master's in that. So that took uh, two to three years. And then it was trial and error, clinical research, um, and then further into functional medicine. So the whole journey took about seven years, but I had started implementing what I learned on the family um, and through trial and error and functional medicine testing, I was able to determine where the imbalances were um, mm -hmm. in my son's body and then make um, improvements. Awesome. So uh, you, uh, you use this term functional medicine. Uh, can you help us understand what that means? Right. So conventional medicine is more what, you know, most insurance companies pay for, at least in the States. And you go to your doctor for an annual, annual physical and you get a CBC, which is a complete blood count. And they'll check your cholesterol and your glucose. And those are important things to check. But it's not going to determine how your body is functioning. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. functional medicine is just a different lab testing. So it's run by doctors and PhDs and scientists. Mm-hmm. It's not voodoo medicine. Um, and, and I guess if some people are into that. That's fine, right? But mm-hmm. I'm very scientific, so I wanted to understand how the body functions. Mm-hmm. So with 74 markers, we could see how your gut functions, how your Krebs cycle, how your detoxification, your nutrition markers on that and on other your adrenal system your neurotransmitters so lots of times in trompreneurs and employees for that matter have focus issues or they get distracted and why or why are we addicted to certain vices like smoking or drinking or recreational or whatever yeah. um, it could be an imbalance of dopamine and serotonin so functional medicine is basically how does one's body function mm-hmm. using specialized labs Awesome. So sounds like it's a very holistic approach, uh, you know, not just focusing on one ailment or specific uh, issue that you're having, but, you know, looking at you as a, as a person as a whole, right? Exactly. So you, you know, if you go, if you have a skin issue, you go to the dermatologist. Yeah, if yeah. you have a heart issue, you go to the cardiologist, right? And so on, endocrinologist, if you have other issues. But no one's looking at the whole person saying, well, maybe you have a skin issue because you can't break down fats and then that makes you break out. Maybe you have a heart issue because you have imbalances throughout your system and we so we look at from you know head to toe what's going on with specialized labs that show us that you gain insight into how your body functions, mm-hmm. where the overgrowths are and the deficiencies. Awesome. So um from what I know, uh, you your treatment is uh, sort of uh, rooted in food plants and and uh, diet. Uh, so, can you tell us a little bit about that? So, depending on what you're deficient in, and depending if you're vegan or you do eat animal protein, is how I customize the routine. And then, suppose you have bad bacteria on your stomach, then you need certain probiotics. So, there's a combination of supplementation, um, a combination of food. Lots of people say, "Oh, I don't want to take anything. I, you know, it's not medicine, but I don't want to take even a supplement." or a vitamin or a mineral. I want to get it all from food. Mm-hmm. Well, we can only do that if you absorb. So we'd have to you know, look at the gut first. Can you absorb? And then what foods can you absorb? And I promote organic food, um, non-GMO. There's a lot of chemicals in our food. And um, if you can't detoxify, you're going to hold on to it. And that's what I see with a lot of my cancer patients. Mm-hmm. I see. Um, so when you started on um, this journey, you said you primarily did it for your son. Did you have this in the back of your mind that you actually want to, uh, you know, uh, turn into a profession? No way. No way. So when I was on the trading floor at Goldman Sachs, if someone told me that I was going to be doing this fast forward, I would be like, you're crazy. (laughs) No possible way. I mean, I loved my career and I found it so fascinating. You know, you're actually, you're able to work at a company, but you're also like a consultant. So you're traveling all over and getting to understand how people work. Mm-hmm. And meeting such bright people is exciting as well. Um, this was something totally different. And, you know, you change from employee to mm-hmm. entrepreneur. Is, mm-hmm. it, is it really, um, it's a big change. It's yeah. a transformation. You have to be ready for it, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, my advice would be like, if you have a job now, do a side hustle yeah. to make Sure. Do you like it? Can you make money from it? Are you passionate for it? Build that up and then leave, mm-hmm. you know, your security. Yeah. And did you do that? No. In my case, I just, <laughs> I said, you know, it's my son and he's not doing well and yeah. no one could give me answers. So like when I'm 80 something years old on my deathbed, maybe it's going to be 90. Um, did I do the right thing? And in my heart, I couldn't do the right thing if I was still there. So I left and really immersed myself in that. And then I had, you know, headhunters saying, Hey, you know, your kid's better. Come on back. Uh And I said, I'll come back. 
yeah. but under a different capacity. So I went to my main brokerage accounts and I taught them wellness. You nice. know, the head honchos, they're really, you know, they got one foot in the grave. They work hard, they play hard, they drink hard, they eat the wrong foods, who's had heart issues, taking all medications. So yeah. basically I taught them lifestyle. Awesome. That's great. And uh, was that so, you know, obviously you had very uh, deep, uh, you know, personal reasons to leave your career and then, uh, you know, go into this new profession. But do you think that was a risky decision on your part? You know, in life, you have to take risk, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go tight roping over the George Washington Bridge. First mm -hmm. of all, I hate heights and I know I'm not going to do well. I'll probably die. But yeah. this, <laughs> you know, what's the worst case scenario? I could have got another job, right? Yeah. So I think that the fear of taking a risk is what holds people back. And, mm -hmm. and if you really look at the whole picture and say, okay, what, of uncertainty am I afraid of? Mm -hmm. So I could have stayed at Gallman and left my son in the hands of doctors and I doubt if he would be where he is. Mm -hmm. Or I took the risk and say, well, first I'm gonna to try to heal him. If I do, great. If I don't, I tried my best. And then I could always, worst case scenario, I, I would have, could have gone back to Goldman or one of my institutional clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And um, were there any uh, mistakes that you made earlier on as you, uh, you know, started your own business? Yes. <laughs> so there's a lot of mistakes, you know, we're all human. We're mm -hmm. all going to make mistakes, right? So this is where you need a blueprint. This mm -hmm. is where I would advise to follow people who have done this before, read books, mm -hmm. you know, um, go on and watch webinars. But first you have to be very mindful of mm -hmm. what you want. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you want to start a business, why? What's the why behind it? Why do you want to start? Do you think you have clients? You know, and now you may have family and you're in a circle that say, yeah, it's going to work. But you know, no, you have to find someone who's going to pay you. Yeah, so yeah. you have to really go outside of that. Then you might have your inner circle and family members who are fearful themselves, who never took risks. So yeah, yeah. they may tell you, not because they don't love you or they don't want you to succeed, but they might say, don't do it because they're afraid for yeah. you. So mm -hmm. you have to be so sure, you have to be very convicted in what you want mm -hmm. and then put a blueprint together and know, leave some leave some wiggle room because you are going to make mistakes. You may spend too much money here or too little there, um, you know, or you may not know how to be great with customers or send out emails or have the processes in place. Once you have that in place and it takes time. Yeah. So you also have to know it's a journey. Yeah. So that's why I like to say, if you start as a side hustle, at least you could fall back on your main um, position to pay your bills and to even fund the startup, but be smart with everything you buy, spend, and put time into. Yeah, yeah. You gave uh, you know the whole journey of an entrepreneur into a very succinct uh, uh, answer, which was very spot on. And I, I've I've talked to so many entrepreneurs, even my in my own journey. So it goes exactly like that. You know, uh, it starts a little bit rocky. You make a little bit, uh, you know, some mistakes. You learn. And uh, yeah, the idea is keep going. Um, so that's good. Uh, all right, so let's talk about your uh, journey at Goldman Sachs. So, you know, it's one of the largest uh, banks in the world, a very prestigious institution. Um, did you learn anything uh, there that was helpful to you in your business? So, yes, and with Goldman Sachs, um, you know, I'll never forget, I was interviewed by 22 people. Wow. So A, you have to really, you know, you have to really be able to present yourself. Mm -hmm. So I went there for a different, I was interviewed for a different position and I didn't want that position once I started the interview and I was very upfront and I said, you know, it's, this is a great corporation and you are great individuals, but I don't want this job. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and someone else would have said, just get into Goldman, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, but let me tell you what I think you need. Mm -hmm. So at the time I was working at Lehman Brothers and they had a better system than Goldman. And mm -hmm. I said, quite frankly, you are the number one and I'm shocked that you don't have this comparable thing. Mm -hmm. So then I said, this is, so they were like, well, can you do that? I said, well, I do that now. This is what you need. So then they were like, okay, come meet this partner, this partner, that partner. Cause at the time it was, um, privately owned I see. and I basically pitched my position. Um, mm -hmm. so one thing is go on every interview and really you ask questions as well, but you have to be it in a very diplomatic way because you're mm -hmm. going to deal with some people who have egos. They think their company is amazing. So go there to learn, keep your mm -hmm. eyes open and see how you could fit in or not fit in, right? That's mm -hmm. one thing. The second thing is Goldman Sachs would always say their number one asset were their employees, I not see. their clients, mm -hmm. but their employees. So the loyalty that you felt you would, you know, that was amazing to work for someone like that and take the initiative. Like if someone tells you, you have to do A, B, and C, will you do A, B, and C, but then now find out D, E, F, and G. Yeah. Find more to do, to go the extra mile because people will look at that. Yeah. And so many people just were like, oh, here's my checklist. Now I did it. So let me go on social media and goof off for lunch or don't go like, no, in, yes, have a work life balance, but go the extra mile because you will stick out. And then during performance reviews, you know, they're always going to try to find something to give you some corrective criticism, take it and, and really go back in a quiet place and say, is this true about myself? Can I be better in this area and then work on it? Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, those are the culture things that I learned. Like at Goldman, there wasn't, you always performed at your excellence. Awesome. And if you wanted to go get higher and higher, um, there was no, no, mm -hmm. you know, awesome. like you really went. So, so to summarize, basically uh, the hard work, the values of hard work and, uh, you know, working at, uh, towards, uh, striving for excellence and also taking, um, feedback and improving yourself, uh, were the, were the key things that you took from them. Now on the contrary, was there anything that you had to unlearn, um, uh, <laughs> something that you could not really apply in your business or, you know, it was sort of a hindrance. Well, I'll tell you one thing. When you have your own business and you have to order business cards, you're not calling the secretary or the assistant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you have to travel, there is no T&E department. Okay. Yeah. So that was like, oh, wow. I have to, oh, wow. The printer's out. Oh, my computer, something went wrong with it. Who do you call? There's no tech department. There's you know nothing. So you have to wear every hat. So yeah. if you are working at a company, and you want to go the entrepreneurial route, you have to see who are the people that you interact with every day and how can you, at the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey, do their roles yeah, yeah. and then eventually you could delegate that, right? But right. at the beginning, if you're looking at your finances and your bottom line, you have to say, oh, so I have to learn this. So mm -hmm. if you have a problem with your computer, instead of just handing it off, sit down with the tech and say, how do you do that? How do you do that troubleshooting? Yeah. You know, who are you buying the business cards from? You yeah. know, how do you do that? Cool. All right. Those are really good pointers. Um, all right. So let us, uh, uh, let us uh, go towards your uh, business journey now. How did you acquire your first clients uh, other than obviously your sons or your son? Yeah. So I did a lot of speaking mm -hmm. and I thought, well, you know, I, I went back to, so I spoke at Fidelity, um, nice. hired me for their corporate wellness for their top achievers. Um, and then I went to UBS and mm -hmm. then I went to this milestone capital management. And then I thought, Hey, what about local events? 
you know, so let me go to different organizations. And every time I spoke, I would get more clients. Nice. And then it was a referral or people would say, wow, this testing, that testing. And then, you know, what's great is like wherever you go, you could be your own uh, salesperson in an unsalesy way. For instance, like if people, you know, if you go to networking and people are like, hey, this is what I do, this is what I do, and then, you know, do you need this? Yeah, I see that a lot with insurance. Like, <laughs> do you need this health insurance or that insurance? You know, no. Instead, really be interested in the person and say, I really want to learn what you do. How can I help you? I and then build a relationship with all these people. Once you then speak clearly and explain what you do, then people will either refer you, hire you. And if you have an opportunity to speak, do that. Now, I always spoke in person, but now virtual summits are the big thing. I know my son's involved in so many of those and you gather, you know, 30, 50, 100 people together. Um, that's another way that you could get known. Yeah. So I would say if, if you have an opportunity to speak, go speak, even if it's a chamber of commerce, even if it's at a school, even if you create your own meetup for that mm -hmm. matter. Yeah. yeah, those are good, good pointers. Now, uh, you know, after uh, your speaking uh, practice, you got a lot of clients, but have you adopted other means of marketing as well now? Or is it you're continuing with your speaking gigs? Um, how has that changed now that you're more established? Okay, so now, luckily, you saw my sons, uh, luckily, my oldest son has his own digital marketing agency, so he runs Facebook ads. Nice. Um, they explained to me about sales funnels, which, I mean, I never was in marketing in all of my other capacities, so I find it extremely fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to do it. I just yeah. want to create the content and hand it off to them. Yeah. So like, you know, um, even LinkedIn, if you know what you're doing, you could look for job titles of people you want to connect with and offer your services. But yeah. that takes time. You know, again, something that for me, I like that pass it off to one of my sons, Facebook ads, Instagram, Messenger, ManyChat. I don't even know. Like, okay, mm -hmm. great. Let's run one of those. Yeah. So I just have to develop the content, the videos, the emails, and then they take all of that. That's awesome. Now, uh, have you experienced uh, how is the attitude uh, towards this type of medicine? Has it changed over the years? Yes. So first of all, with insurance, again, in the United States, you know, lots of the labs were covered. And then insurance just I don't know. That just got so messed up. So um, lots of the labs are not covered. And then depending on what state you're in and this and that, but complementary medicine is much more received and welcomed and wanted nowadays because mm -hmm. unfortunately you can't get those answers from a lot of the testing yeah, yeah. Um, and, and conventional medicine has its place I'm not saying I, I think it would be a great um, a great marriage if you had both testing and you had those conventional doctors understanding but I've mm -hmm. had many people that come in and they've gone the conventional testing and it couldn't even detect certain parasites mm. you know it's like it's amazing. So um, it's, it's more and more welcomed, especially for a lot of degenerative diseases and the cancers that are out there now, they are linked to toxins and right. eating. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, now uh, coming back to our audience, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, professionals, uh, specifically in the IT industry. Uh, and you know, uh, we tend to work um, long hours and uh, ignore our our uh, you know healthy diet and things like that so what kind of advice will you give uh, to you know hard working people in our audience okay so we'll go back to the dalai lama right mm -hmm. okay. so they asked him what surprised him the most mm -hmm. and he said man because the first part of your life you're so busy accumulating wealth mm -hmm. and you don't live 
Yeah. And the second part of your life, you use that wealth to regain your health. <laughs> so it's a problem, right? And then we never live. So entrepreneurship and living in society today is very stressful. We could boil it down to nine steps. The thing is you have to be consistent, right? So you want to be mindful and alert mm -hmm. and awake in everything you do. Yeah. One is you look at your food and if it's, you know, I don't, people always ask, is keto better than paleo? Is vegan? Is this? Listen, you know your body, right? So if you're eating nothing but bread and you're gaining weight and all your problem spots, you, people know like this is a problem, right? Yeah. So before you eat, ask yourself, is this beneficial to my body, to my energy? to my brain cells, to my neurons. If you ask that before you vaped <laughs> or before you had alcohol, you probably would say, oh God, it's not, right? Mm -hmm. Before mm -hmm. you eat some fast food, you could ask yourself that. So be mindful of the way you eat and make it balanced, number one. Make sure you're drinking enough water is number two. So many people are dehydrated, they mm -hmm. um, have headaches, they have lack of energy, and then they don't drink water. We're mm -hmm. not made of Gatorade, we're made of water. <laughs> um, the next thing is that you do need supplements. I mean, I haven't found anyone who could get all of their nutrients from food. It would have to be organic. They would have to be able to absorb 100%. Probiotics is like one of my favorite supplements, but it has to be quality probiotics and you don't need a lot acidophilus bifidus you're done um also can you recommend, can you recommend any any particular brand uh, for probiotics i love a company called claire and that's with a k okay. um so you could give that to little infants uh, pregnant women that take it it's what i gave my kids we still take it today it's awesome. a great company lots of companies you want to look at what it's derived from Mm -hmm. and what the additional ingredients are. So if it has multidextrin, it could be genetically modified corn, and they're not telling you that. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to show everything, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. So you want to make sure you have the right thing, like vitamin C and vitamin D. You may need it, right? So mm -hmm. certain tests, when you do go to your annual physical, ask them not just to take a CBC, but add the vitamin D, add vitamin C if they can, add the magnesium. Get as much information and get your test results. You must own your health and your life. You can't leave it to them. Mm -hmm. So many people never ask for test results. Um, the next is you have to deal with stress because you could eat organic and drink all the water you want. But if you are one stressed out person, you're going to shut down digestion. Your adrenal system is going to get affected and you could open yourself up to disease. Mm -hmm. So deal with stress. If it meditation, yoga, I don't care what it is. Find a healthy way to deal with stress yeah. and then overwhelm, you know? So again, it goes back to being mindful and then we need sleep, you know, but how much sleep? It has to be quality sleep. Yeah. Everybody's different, right? There's no like, oh, you have to get this much time. But I do say this, if you wake up at 6 a.m., go to bed the same day you woke up. Don't get up at 6 a.m. and then go to bed at 2 a.m. the next day. Your body is now up for two days. Yeah, it yeah. could take three days to recover. So look at that. And then also um, have a purpose. Have a higher, higher mission in mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. you know, not just to be successful. Give back. Yeah. You know, be grateful and give back. Um, and then be a smart or a savvy consumer. Mm -hmm. Look at the stuff you're putting in your body, putting on your body. Do some research. You know, I, I try to put as much research on Facebook and my, all my social media, like to, or my blogs. I've nicely put it in there. I don't judge anybody. But do you know you're putting all this stuff in your body, on your body? But here's alternatives. So whatever you put your, whatever you're buying, you're saying, hey, I believe in this company. Yeah. But you have to be mindful. 
Sure. You know, yeah. and exercise, move. I don't care if it's 10 minutes a day, but do some movement, you know, yeah. walk, put on your Fitbit, that should motivate you. But you have to have the positive mindset that you can do this. Awesome. If you if you don't, then it's going to be like New Year's resolutions. You're never going to achieve. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, Th that was quite comprehensive. Thanks a lot for that. Um, now I heard a recent uh, podcast interview that you had with uh, Dr. Ron Kaiser, and uh, in that you talked about the importance of habits. Um, mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about that importance of habits, particularly how it relates to entrepreneurship and positive mindset? Exactly. So, and Dr. Ron is 81 years old wow. and he looks amazing and he wrote a book at 80. So I'm like, you know what? Life doesn't have to end. You, can, you know, people don't retire. If you are passionate about something, you could do this forever, but with a work-life balance. Yeah. So habits, um, again, it's being mindful. When you wake up in the morning, how do you wake up? Are you rushed? Do you have that alarm? Do you hit snooze? If you're hitting snooze, you're trying to stop from starting your day. That's a problem. Yeah. When we wake up, we should be so happy we're breathing and we have another day to do what we want to get done, right? Yeah. So wake up with like, thank you. I'm alive. Let's get going. Right. And what do you want to do? Do you want to, some people go right to exercise right away. Some people pray, some people meditate. You need to pick out the habit that will get you in the right frame of mind first, even if it's a five minute habit. Then the next thing should be like, okay, the next habit, what are you going to eat? People say they're too busy. Well, drink water, have something, you know, a little preparation. So you should be able, you have to dictate your day. Otherwise, other people would dictate their day for you. Mm -hmm. So if you check your email first thing in the morning, you're done because now someone else is dictating your day right? Yeah. So you have to like write it on an index card. These are the things that I'm going to do when I wake up until it becomes second nature. And it should be mindful, like keep your mindset and your body and then write down three things you need to get done today to mm. achieve the business goal you have. That's great. Awesome. Um, and now uh, you've shared a lot uh, in this uh, short time period, uh, but is there anything else that I haven't asked about, uh, you know, your profession or how you can help other people um, that, that you may want to share? Well, first I would say for people who are listening, they should set 90 day goals instead of a year goal. So if you do 90 day goals, and this is what I have. So I have a total wellness empowerment membership and it starts, so it's all, so we think about the total wellness, right? It's the mind, the body, the spirit. And first we have to be mindful of what it is that we want to do in life. Is it the business? What is it? Is it a career? Is it a love life? You know, all of this is affected. So if you feel good in your own skin, you're going to make the right decisions for the relationship you're in as opposed mm -hmm. to toxic ones. Yeah. And then you'll make the right decisions for your career and the right decisions for your finances. It all goes together. So first it's 90 day goals for your life and for your finances and your health. I would really recommend people do that. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you know, making the task that you need to do every day and hold yourself accountable yeah, yeah. to do it. So I do, besides functional medicine, I have my uh, total wellness membership. And then I have the nine steps that are, um, what I saw in the past 18 years that people need to live a healthy lifestyle, be it an entrepreneur or corporate wellness or an individual or a family. It's okay. just learning this. They don't teach it, unfortunately, in schools or doctors don't even teach it. And it's something that we should all follow. Awesome. That's great. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, point out that I checked out your Pinterest account and uh, there were some really yummy looking dishes there. So I do recommend the audience to check it out. Uh, now, before I let you go, can you tell us uh, how we can reach you, uh, your website address, and um, how we can get in touch with, touch with you? Yes. 
So my website is Nancy Guberti, and it's G-U-B as in boy, E-R-T-I dot com. And on there, you could see my total wellness. You could see my blog. You know, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to empower others to lead a healthy lifestyle because I know it will make a ripple effect. Um, I also have a, a website called Raising Achievers because I feel that this world needs achievers and givers. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about leaving a legacy. Yeah. So you could find me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and it's all Nancy Guberti. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much for being with us today and sharing uh, you know, this wonderful information. I'm sure everyone in the audience got a lot of value. So thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. It will mean the world to us. And again, if you want to be notified about our new content, please consider subscribing to our channel. And now, if you are an existing or an aspiring technology entrepreneur, then I invite you to check out my new online workshop, Bootstrapping Your Tech Startup Dreams. Go to go.tetranoodle.com slash boot hyphen podcast and sign up for free. I want to make sure more successful and sound decisions are made every day in your tech projects. Let's start finding solutions to your problems. So go to go.tetranoodle.com slash boot hyphen podcast and I look forward to helping you with your tech startups.